Well, welcome back, everybody. Lovely Monday here, placed in shelter. Your host, Ryan Caterizzoli. And a uh, real quick little quarantine update. Nothing crazy over the weekend. Uh, I played daddy daycare with mom working all weekend. Uh, but if you were in Wisconsin, it was a beautiful weekend. We had 70 degrees and sunny. And uh, unfortunately, Wisconsin's a little bipolar because today it's about 45, 50 degrees. So uh, it's amazing how we can go from absolutely beautiful to put your jacket back on in less than 24 hours. Uh, we did fly kites this weekend, and um, I told Tenley repeatedly, don't let go of the kite. Well, it turns out that Elsa decided she wanted to go into the unknown. So we are down to one kite from two, uh, and I think she learned a lesson. Uh, so we'll try that again maybe in the future and see if she can hang on a little bit better. Uh, today's show, we're going to call Snackability. And, you know, everybody knows that our current environment's changing, uh, and the way we're purchasing food is changing. But the question I have is, does that change what the food trends were leading into 2020? Um, and everybody knows that snacking was one of the hottest markets in the food service segment. Um, and you can go online. It doesn't take a big search uh, to find all sorts of different statistics. Um, so I'm not going to list off a ton of them. I just wanted to point out a few. You know, it said uh, the majority of adults, 59%, say they prefer to eat several small meals as opposed to uh, larger meals throughout the day. And that number jumps up to around 70% when you talk about millennials. Um, and then another publication was saying that 60% of people actually buy snacks as a part of their grocery runs, which makes sense. And then it also said that 57% of consumers replace their meals with snacks. So snacking is really taking off. And obviously everyone here has probably heard the term, everyone's taken the class, lying with statistics. And all you have to do is find some statistics that support what you're trying to talk about. Um, but everybody here can probably admit that snacking is definitely moving up. It's a trend. It's, it's something that people are looking at doing more and more often. So um, what I thought was interesting, though, is that this was a report that came out from uh, the 2019 Snack Expo. And here were the top five snacking trends that people saw. And I want you to remember a couple of these because it's going to tie into some of the equipment that we talked about. Um, so number one is health-friendly snacks. Number two is international snacks. Remember that one. Um, and then beverage-flavored snacks. Uh, they had me at Jack Daniels Cakes or beer, craft beer-flavored pretzels. Um, cheesy snacks. I'm from Wisconsin. You had me at cheesy. Uh, and then last but not least is funky beef jerky. So I, I don't know about that one. Is that alligator jerky or, uh, you know, finding things like that? Um, so there's clearly some uh, different trends going on in the snacking world. Now, the second portion of today's talk is going to be safe snacking, because obviously the world around us is changing and the way we're purchasing food is different. So um, here are a couple of points for snacking healthy, snacking safely, um, and you're going to have to have an area that's visible to your customers. The customer is going to want to see what's being prepared, and this probably holds true for the food service in general. They want to see where it's being prepared. They want to see a clean area. They want to see the employee wearing gloves or, or at least close to a hand washing station that's being utilized. Um, and then from that, because you're out in a visible area, it really promotes the freshness of the product, you know, because everything now is going to be packaging. So the second part here is packaging is key. Um, so when you see it being prepared and then placed in a good looking plastic or a good looking cardboard with a cellophane clear container, that's gonna be obviously more intriguing to you than walking up to a standalone spot with product that's been there and you're not sure how long it's been there. If the packaging is enclosed, you don't see what's inside of it, you're probably less likely to buy. The third thing, aroma and smells, they sell. Um, so when you have this, in a visible area where people can see it, it promotes freshness, and then you get the smell in the air. I always think of the roasted nuts at every single fair or Six Flags Great America, <clears throat> where you walk by and the, and the vendor's right there and you get the little bag of them. Those things taste great five days later, but there's something about that smell in the air that really intrigues you to make that purchase. Um, and with that, I think that snacking is, is a big impulse buy. So you have to hit a lot of these key points to really intrigue somebody to purchase it right there on the spot. Um, and then last but not least is portion size versus the cost. There's got to be some value there. 
Um, obviously, if the portion size is too large, somebody's not necessarily going to buy that as a snack. That's more of something that they're going to want to take home um, versus having a nice small kind of eat at the moment type thing. So when you, when you hit the right portion size with the right, right cost, you really pose a good value to the customer. So with that, let's talk about kind of what Hatco has, which is brand new. Uh, some people here have probably seen this before, but many of you maybe haven't. Um, and this is a brand new SunTech system that we have. Um, it's a Hatco with SunTech and in partnership, and we're calling this the snack system. Now, looking at the snack system here, uh, one of the big things is showing that value in snacking this unit here is very, very small, and it runs at 120 volts. So you can get this in a single, or you can get this in a double. And even the double unit is still running at a 120 volt plug, um, and it only has around 15 amps, it's 1800 watts. So remember that point of being out in the visible area, maybe having a station that's set up. This lends to that very nicely because it's very easy to plug in. You can move it from station to station, so it hits a lot of those key points. Um, second thing, you're gonna have the programmability and adjustability not only change the temperature from 220 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 425, but you're gonna have four different presets that give you the ability to change uh, temperature, it's gonna let you change the time, and it's gonna let you change the percentage of power on the top plate. Because as you experiment with different products, you're gonna learn that some products actually do better if the top plate is 30% less power than the bottom plate. But that's gonna come through experimentation with each and every product that you place in it. But that right there hits on another key point. You can make things fresh right here. Your average cook time in something like this is three to six minutes. So there's that fresh aroma in the air. When you're making products, people are seen, and then you can package them right in front of the customer. So you're hitting a lot of the key points there. Now with that, there's also seven different plates available. So um, I'm gonna move on one more slide here and show you the different plates. Now there's five of them that are probably pretty normal. People see them all the time. You've got your freestyle, which is kind of a waffle plate if you wanna do square waffles or perhaps liege waffles that are already frozen and prepared. The Belgian round is standard that comes with the unit. And then you choose one additional plate. So you have your sandwich and your panini, you have your donut plate, and then the two that I really wanna talk about is number one, the coffee bean. Remember how we talked about value and cost and portion size? The coffee bean really would allow a coffee place to have an added value to include two, three, four of these in a side order with your cup of coffee. Perhaps even it's the cafe's thing where they just include it with cups of coffee. So that's where you can show some value. And then the last one you see on the end is called Chelky. Well, remember earlier, one of the biggest trends was an international product. The Chelky is actually an international product from Japan. The easiest way I can explain it is it's a laminate based dough in the form of a, a churro. So if you were to take the two of them and put them together, that's similar to what a Chelky is. We can kind of uh, simulate what it is by just using like a croissant dough and then you lightly roll it in some cinnamon sugar and then some powdered sugar on the end product when it's finally done. But that is something that's international. It intrigues people and they wanna see it. Uh, they wanna try it once they see what you're doing there. So a couple of more key points that this one definitely hits on. Um, and then with that, you know, there's a ton of different options here for you. You can purchase extra plates if needed. Um, and then when we talk about healthy, obviously when you're making any of these products, the ingredients that you're putting in is what makes it either healthy or not. Now, sometimes uh, the healthier it is, uh, you have to find unique ways to bring out the flavor and the different ingredients versus just adding in a lot of fats and sugars, which give you a lot of the goodness that we also crave very often, but aren't necessarily healthy. So you can see how this type of unit can really hit upon a lot of different options that we have. You know, last but not least, if you want to get into waffles, for example, chicken, chicken and waffles has been taking off, but it's not a mainstay, it's not your major item. This is a product that will allow you to do that without having to get forced into just purchasing a waffle maker. You could switch from waffles in the morning to paninis or sandwiches in the afternoon. So with snackability, with versatility, 
the Hackbo Snack system here is uh, definitely hitting on a lot of the key spots that we talk about. And with that, that's gonna wrap up today's conversation. So as always, if you were to open up on the bottom, you can see the chat option. If you do have any questions, you can enter them there and we will answer them as they're coming in. I didn't have any recent ones emailed to me, so I can't go over those. Although Mike Whiteley did send in a uh, email question for Stump the Chumps that I wasn't able to ask. So while I kill a little bit of time here, I can read it for you. And the question was whether or not I had quit smoking cigarettes and then included e-cigarettes. Um, unfortunately, uh, part of this question is yes and the other part is a no. Um, but we have now hit two months that I haven't used any tobacco at all, so no cigarettes for me. However, to substitute my nicotine habit, I have been using a vape. Uh, which is proving to kind of cut the edge and, and keep me away from using tobacco. So yes, Mike, I have quit using cigarettes, but I am also using a vape right now. So that'll be the next step that I have to get away from. So hopefully I can get to the end. Um, Travis, do you wear a skirt while you vape on the patio? Hey, listen, I will take all the criticism in the world. That's totally fine. But I feel better. I know it's not a healthy option. I would not intrigue any, or I would not push anybody to start doing it if they aren't, but if you can find it as a substitute to get away from cigarettes, more power to you. Um, how should the surfaces be treated to prep for cooking? Uh, great question. So those are cast aluminum surfaces, and they do need to be broken in just similar to how a cast iron needs to be broken in. You're gonna have to get some carbon buildup on there. So what we recommend is using a spray, a silicone-based spray uh, that you can put on the plate several times. You'll heat them up and kind of burn that off spray it again, heat it up, burn it off. We also recommend when you're first using it, as you go through your batches, for example, waffles, when I was doing the test on this, in the beginning I was spraying in between every waffle, but the second day, once it was really kind of uh, broken in, I was spraying maybe once every 15 to 20 waffles. So once the plates get broken in, they're much easier to use than they are right out of the box. But I warn you, if you take this out of the box and you pour batter directly into it, you are gonna have nothing but a giant mess to clean up. So remember that one. Is there a reason why only two of the plates are nonstick? Why those two in particular and why not the others? Uh, it's actually a really good question. Uh, the nonstick, sometimes those plates tend to wear off and you will then have to replace the plate because the nonstick surface has come off of it. Um, I don't know why it's those two in particular. I think it has more to do with the cake type batters that are being used in them um, and they prevent sticking from the aluminum. But in reality, any of the aluminum plates that we have from everything that I've seen, everything I've tested and everything I've been told, as long as you are prepping them correctly and utilizing the spray to begin with, you shouldn't have any issues with them at all. Uh, but Brian, when this does go live, I'll make sure that I address that as well in the description. Uh, Jim, are the plates dishwasher safe? Uh, a cast aluminum plate would be dishwasher safe. However, I don't believe you're going to have to be placing them directly in the dishwasher. In fact, the more often that you clean them to that extent, the more you're going to have to go through that uh, prepping situation, just like you would with the cast iron skillet. So really, you don't want to be washing them all the time. You'd be better off, especially when you're doing waffles, they don't get that dirty. So just a damp cloth at the end of the night would be good enough to get those clean. Uh, good question. Let's see here. Renee, on the accessories, it shows cleaning brush, but I don't see it under the configurations. The cleaning brush is standard. It will come with the unit every single time. And it also comes with a little key so that you can remove the plates very easily. Uh, where does Ryan draw the line on production before you move to the cram foos unit? Uh, for me, it really depends upon the number of hours that you're going to be utilizing the unit throughout the day. Um, I think anything over eight hours a day, ten, eight hours is kind of my line, where I'm looking at moving into the Crampoos product, where you're going to have a cast iron unit as opposed to the cast aluminum. You're also going to pay a good probably 45 to 50% more, and you're going to lose the versatility. So if my primary product is waffles, I'm going to be looking at a crampoos, and if my primary, uh, if I'm going over eight hours a day. If I want to add chicken and waffles to a, a lunch program or even an early evening program, um, then the SunTech waffle maker will do the job because it's not going to get utilized for that many hours of the day. Awesome questions, guys. Anything else? 
Well, cool. With that, that's going to take us to everybody's favorite part, and that's going to be the memes of the day. Now, uh, none of these today were submitted by you. These ones were found by myself. If I can find them back here. Here we go. All right. And the first one, it's quarantine day again. Uh, one of my favorite movies, obviously Groundhog Day. Everybody knows it feels like Groundhog's Day pretty much every day in my life. Number two, uh, now that we have everyone washing their hands correctly, next week, turn signals. Uh, and, you know, some of you don't live close enough to Illinois to experience the bad driving that comes out of that state. But here in Wisconsin, they tend to spend a lot of time here in the summer. So uh, turn signals up to go left, down to go right. Um, and this last one, I have to apologize in advance. All the ladies out there, I apologize. But I cleared it with my wife, so I won't be sleeping on the couch. Um, but I thought this one was funny. In fact, I laughed out loud, and it's my favorite meme to date right now. Um, and they found a picture of me taking my wife to get pampered for the first time after quarantine. So uh, maybe I just found it so funny because I absolutely love that movie. Uh, that was a, a childhood great I used to watch when I was a kid. So uh, with that, that's going to wrap up today's episode. As always, if you are catching this on YouTube and want to be a part of the conversation, you can join us live every day at 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, Central Standard Time. Simply choose the link in the description and you can be taken right to the Zoom meeting. Um, if you do want to have any questions, topic ideas, heck, if you want to be a guest on the show and you've got some ideas, you can go ahead and email those to me at placedinshelter at gmail.com. And then if you hit the bell notification down here, you'll be notified every single time Hacko posts a new video. And to show us that you're enjoying the content, please like, share, and subscribe. And with that, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.